Hello everyone, I'm Francis here. I am a participant in the Consensus Blockchain Developer Bootcamp. Um, today I am going to show you the final project that I've done. Um, on your in front of you is my uh, GitHub where I store all my project um, files. And just as a brief introduction, my project is about a smart cryptocurrency bank where the user can um, deposit ETH and ERC20 tokens as well as withdraw in ETH and any ERC20 tokens. So user deposit will earn an interest from uh, established protocols such as Compound. And also um, user will be able to swap into other crypto uh, ERC20 currencies uh, through the uh, interaction with Uniswap. Um, one thing um, the user should be aware is that the ERC20 tokens which are deposited will be converted into ETH and, and uh, deposited to compound to earn interest. So user can choose to withdraw the balances as either ETH or any other ERC20 tokens. Um, as I mentioned, the, that the, the application will interact with Compound and Uniswap. And it also uses open Zeppelin contracts and libraries, uh, such as uh, ERC20 and reentrancy guard and address. Um, and you can actually view the contract is uh, deployed on the Ringbean testnet and verified on, on that uh, address as well. Um, just click on this address and you will be you will be able to go there and interact with the contract. So now I am going to um, show you how you can interact with the application. So users, there are three ways to interact with the DAP. First of all, you can go to the uh, publicly deployed, deployed website, uh, Smart Bank for Sale. Um, or uh, a second way is to interact through a local network. You can download this folder um, and, also, and, and then follow the instruction here and um, launch it on your, on, on your local network. The thirdly, you can uh, interact via Etherscan. So just click this link and then it will bring you to the Etherscan Ringby Net testnet and, and then you can start interacting with it. So I will show you the public, um, sorry, I've already got it here. Okay, so this is the uh, publicly deployed uh, web interface uh, in front of you. So first of all, you have to, um, before you're able to interact with this website, you have to install MetaMask. So once you have uh, installed MetaMask, as I have, then you will be able to connect your wallet. So your wallet is now connected. And note that this uh, application is deployed to Ringbeat Network. So if I were to um, go to the mainnet, for example, and I try to connect, then it will show you a it will issue a warning message to say that this step only works on the Ringb test test net for now. Please switch to Ringb to interact with the DAP. So um, yeah, it's a basically a warning to the user that we can only interact with this via RingB testnet. Okay. Now, um, I will show you how you can interact with the, with, with the DAP. Uh, so first of all, you can, uh, I have 11.4 uh, ETH in my wallet. So I can deploy, uh, say 0 0.1 ETH. and then your MetaMask wallet will come up, ask you to approve.
and then it will show you a message to say please wait and once it's done it will give you this message that you have deposited 0.1 ETH and to to check that you have indeed 0.1 ETH in your balance you can um, go here so yeah you have a balance of 0.1 ETH um, now let me show you before I go to withdraw let me show you how you can also deposit ERC20 token for example so let me now show you I actually do have some link token in my wallet So let me get the address of the token. And then let me deposit uh, 20 link token. Um, so for ERC20 token, before you are able to transfer the token, you have to approve. So that's what I'm doing, approve the token. And then once uh, the, the approve is uh, confirmed, it will show you this message, you have approved 20 link, yeah? Um, and once you have approved, then you can deposit. Now you click deposit ERC20 token. Confirm. Okay, so you have deposited 20 link. So that's how you deposit ETH as well as ERC20 token. Now, let me show you how you can uh, withdraw the amount. So before that, let me just check whether, uh, let me just check my ETH balance. So you can see that I've now, my ETH, ETH balance has increased. Um, as, and as I mentioned, the ERC20 tokens which are deposited to this contract will be converted into ETH. So a uh, user can uh, withdraw this amount in ETH. You can withdraw the full amount or you can withdraw partially. So let me just withdraw partially. 0 0.05. Okay, so you have withdrawn this amount of ETH and you have this amount remaining. So let's uh, check. Okay, yeah, so you have this amount of ETH remaining. Um, and then let me show you how you can withdraw in ERC20 token. So remember I mentioned that you can withdraw in any ERC20 token provided that you are able to swap it on at Uniswap. So because this contract interact with uh, Uniswap and if there is no liquidity pool for a token, then you can't swap the token and it will give you a one, uh, 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 an error message. So let me, um, I do have a ZRX token let me get the token address uh, 
and let me withdraw all the remaining amount. Okay, so it says you have withdrawn ZRX token worth this much of ETH and you have zero balance remaining. And let's check your ETH balance. So you have zero balance. So that's a simple walkthrough of how you interact with the DAP. Um, and bear in mind that to user can also uh, input any amount that could potentially break this uh, web interface but I have also added some input validation so for example if let's say I input any any number then it will prompt the user to in enter a valid ERC20 token address um, or if I enter a valid address but enter example so this is the link token address but i enter for amount i enter a, a character um, it also will prompt user to enter number only yeah so there is uh there are input validations in place to prevent any kind of uh um, error from breaking this web interface. Um, another example is, for, uh, for example, if I put in an address, which is uh, not, which is not a, a contract address, not a, an ERC20 token address. So this is a, a wallet address. And I try to um, just play with it. Then it will say un unable to approve amount. Make sure you have the correct ERC20 token address and sufficient balance. So basically it, it, it is able to detect that this is not a con uh, an ERC20 token address. And it will give you this warning message. Okay, now I'll go back to my GitHub. So that, that was a, a de demo of the web interface that I've created to interact with the smart contract. Um, so now I will go through uh, the, the directory structure of the my GitHub. Um, so the root directory is smart bank, and this is where you you um, run the truffle uh, compile truffle migration. Um, and truffle uh, tests. So this is the root directory. And within this directory, you have the migrations files, you have the public folder, sorry, migration folder, public folder. Public folder contains uh, index, uh, ht, index .html file. SRC contains the um, ABIs contains the uh, front end component and then the smart contracts uh, as you can see smartbank.so here and these are the front end uh, files app.js uh, and the css files and then the test folder contains the um, test file and then we have the truffle config uh, package.json um and dot emv example and then we have the three uh files that are required um in the requirement um so i will now go to uh, my vs studio to show you how you can uh 
to 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 go to work through the con smart contract. So as I mentioned, the smart contract interact with uh, the smart contract first of all um, is written in uh, Solidity 0 .0, 8.0 and it interacts with the compound if compound if um, through this interface C if and also interacts with the uh, Uniswap router V2 uh, through these two interfaces and it imports the ERC20 uh, contract from Open Zeppelin and uh, address and this is this address is used to verify whether uh, a contract is a smart con it is, is a uh, contract address or a wallet address and I also imports the re-entrancy guard to guard against uh, re-entrance, um, the risk, the risk of re-entrancy. And also I, I use the uh, safe math to prevent uh, overflow or underflow. So I have commented the contracts in NetSpec uh, comments as well. So this is the main body of the contract. So I, the contract inherited reentrancy guard. This is how you can uh, use the uh, non-reentrant modifier to um, prevent uh, reentrancy. Um, so in the constructor, we have the Uniswap uh, C if and with address. Basically, this is to initialize the uh, the, the Uniswap um, contract. And, and see if contract and, and provide the address for with. Um, and then you have the add balance function. So add balance function is to allow user to deposit ether. Um, so this is deposited via message.value. And um, once it's deposited, it will be sent to uh, see if so through this fu this uh, function here see if dot means and then once it's deposited it will um, give it will emit an event deposit if and these are read only functions so get contract balance and and so on um, I won't go through all of, all the functions but just the key functions um, the next function is the add balance ERC20 function, which takes in uh, ERC20 token address as well as the amount to deposit. So the amount to deposit is expressed in the, the token uh, balance itself. So basically I will key in the ERC20 token address and this function will check whether the, the address is a valid contract address and that is not a, a zero address and it will, it will um, give a warning to say it's not a valid contract address if it um, doesn't pass the test. Also, it requires that the, the balance of the... Um, so as I mentioned just now, the user will need to get approval We'll need to approve the, the amount before, before he or she is able to, to deposit the uh, ERC20 token. So this is basically to check that the user has enough balance to deposit and also the user has enough allowance. Uh, <clears throat> um, otherwise, it will show you the um, insufficient allowance. And also that the amount of deposit has to be greater than zero. Okay, um, so this, once the amount is deposited, it will be, um, it will be, uh, the, the user will, will the user um, token will be swapped into ERC, oh, sorry, will be swapped into ETH 
via Uniswap. And this, this is what you see here. Um, I use the swap as that tokens for if uh, function, and it will check whether the token has been uh, successful, the transaction has uh, successful. If it's uh, greater than zero, then it's, it's um, successful. Otherwise it's, it will show failed. Um, and then it will uh, keep track of this, the, the balances via this um, uh, mapping function. And then once it's uh, converted into ETH, it will be deposited to compound via this deposit to compound function. And uh, once it's uh, successful, it will emit this um, event and then it will return true. So deposit to compound app tokens are the, and, and swap functions are the functions that are used in this deposit ERC20 token function. Um, next, I will be going through get balance in way. So this is the function where user can use to check their contract, uh, sorry, their account balance. <clears throat> uh, so get balance in way is a read only function. So you can see that it's a uh, view only and it will return the amount uh, called the, called the um, user balance. Um, next one is withdraw function. So this is the function that allows user to withdraw ETH. Um, and you can see that I've applied non reentrant modifier here to uh, prevent the risk of reentrancy. And basically this uh, user can specify the amount that he or she wants to withdraw. And the amount will be converted into CEF and redeemed from compound via this uh, function. And then user will be able to, and then the contract will check whether the transaction is successful. Uh, it will check whether the redeem amount is greater than zero. Otherwise uh, it will show you a, a, an error message. Um, and then once it's uh, redeemed from compound, it will, it will uh, send the amount to the user via this function. And, the, and we need to check whether the transaction is successful via uh, this require statement. Uh, if it's not, then it will show you an error message. And upon successful transaction, it will with, it will emit an event and we, we return true. Uh, next, we will look at the withdraw in ERC20 function. So this is, as the name uh, is very self-explanatory, is um, the withdraw function for ERC20 token. So user can specify the amount that they would like to withdraw in in way. Um, this is in ETH terms and the, the ERC20 token address. Um, so this is a function that uh, is also, also has the non-reentrant modifier to prevent uh, reentrancy risk. Um, so it will also check that the token, uh, the token address is a valid contract address and check that the token address is not a zero address. And also it will check that the withdrawal balance is less than or equal to uh, get balance in way, basically the, the account balance of the user. If it's more than the, the uh, account balance, then it will show an error message. Um, so similarly, this will conf uh, this will um, convert the amount of ETH into CEF to uh, calculate the, the amount of CEF and then redeem from compound. 
um, and then it will check that the redeem, it will check that the transaction is successful. Um, if it's successful, redeem will be greater than zero. Um, and then it will swap the token, the, the ETH that has been redeemed from compound into the ERC20 tokens that user selected. Uh, so you can see here is using as a swap as that ETH for tokens function and it swap the token via uh, Uniswap and then return the, the token to this contract. And then this contract will send the ERC20 token to the user um, via this function, uh, transfer function. And if it's successful, uh, it will return true. The function will return true and then uh, we know that it's successful and um, it will emit the, an event and also return true. So I've also included the uh, fallback functions, uh, re receive and fallback uh, to allow the contract to receive ETH. So this is a simple walkthrough of the uh, smart bank contract. Okay, so now I will go through the test file with you. Um, so I, I will first of all, initialize the Ganache CLI. Um, I'll copy this command. And note that we, we will fork mainnet in this uh, command. And also we will unlock two accounts. And the, the purpose for, for this is that we will be using the ETH and DAI balances in these two accounts because they have a lot of ETH and DAI balances for testing purpose. So now have, let's have a look at the test file. So you can see the test file, I have the uh, Uniswap with and com mainnet addresses because we, we are forking the mainnet. And then we will be, uh, I will, I name these two accounts, Alice and Bob. Uh, Alice is the account with a lot of ETH and Bob is the account with uh, DAI. Um, and I initialize the contract with the uh, addresses and also initialize the DAI contract uh, and Uniswap router. Uh, we will be using all these in our test. So first test is uh, to test that, uh, sorry, let me run the test while I um, go through it with you. We'll truffle test then net fork. Okay, it's running now. So let's uh, continue. So the second test. Um, is that it should have a correct, uh, it should deposit correct amount. So this is to test that uh, the contract is able to accept deposit and also uh, to test that the amount deposited is correct. Uh, so the first test has passed, as you can see. Um, and then the third test is to test that the deposit can earn interest from compound. Uh, second test has passed as well. So the third test, we will deposit first of all one ether and then later on another one ether. The reason being that um, compound uh, exchange rate will update after you have uh, deposited uh, a second um, deposit to compound. Um, if you just deposit one uh, time, then the, the exchange rate will not update. So I have to do it twice uh, just to get the exchange rate to update. So the third test, uh, okay, the third test has passed as well. This is the fourth test. Fourth test is to test that after a deposit is made, the, there will be a deposit if event emitted. Um, so the fourth test has passed as well. 
The fifth test is that it should revert on attempt to withdraw more than available amount. So for this test, I deposited one ether initially, and I checked the balance, and then I attempt to withdraw 1.1 ether, and uh, I use the this catch revert uh, function to um, catch the revert basically, uh, and you can see the test has passed as well. Uh, the sixth test is that it should have correct the correct remaining amount after a withdrawal is made. So I I deposited one ether and I um, withdraw. I withdraw all the balance. Uh, so the remaining amount should be zero. And that is what I, 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 I tested. Um, so I compared the remaining amount against the expected amount remaining. So what is expected amount remaining is uh, the number, is the account balance minus amount withdrawn. So yeah, the test has passed as well. The seventh test is that it should accept ERC20 token deposit. So my ERC20 token is DAI, and I try to get the ETH DAI exchange rate from Uniswap. Um, and also I have to approve the DAI. So this is, uh, you can see here, DAI approved before I can uh, deposit DAI. So this is coming from the uh, bot account. Um, and then I use the add balance ERC20 to deposit DAI. And once I've deposited, I get the account balance using get balance in way, and then compare the balance in this uh, statement here. And the test has passed as well. So the eighth test is that it should allow withdrawal in ERC20 token based on DAX exchange rate. Uh, in this case is uh, Uniswap, the DAX. So I, um, I deposited one ether and then I tried to withdraw the amount in DAI. Um, and you can see that uh, I compared the token balance before withdrawal and token balance after withdrawal, and then I minus the two and get the withdrawal token amount and compare that against uh, the actual, well, I, I calculated actual to expected uh, ratio because that there, there, there is a uh, slight basis differences. So, there is a 0.5% of tolerance um, because of these slight differences. Because when you uh, swap on compound, uh, sorry, swap on Uniswap, there is some slippage, slippage as well. Um, so this accounts for that basis differences. So all the tests uh, have passed and that concludes my presentation. Thank you for watching.